afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this afternoon's e-nugget series. I am Tan Sui Chiu, representing the Institute for Financial Literacy. And I'm here this afternoon to talk to you about CPF for retirement. I hope you had had your lunch and are ready to embark on a short learning journey with me over the next uh, 30 minutes or so. There'll be some time at the end for questions and answers. In the meantime, if you have any questions, please do feel free to type it inside the chat box. Who is IFL? So the Institute is a collaboration between Money Sense, the National Financial Education Program, and Singapore Polytechnic Enterprise. The Institute IFL is the outreach arm and we conduct free and unbiased financial education programs for the public. To find out more information, go to our website, ifl.org.sg to find out many more interesting programs that you can access for free. At the end of this talk, there will be a short anonymous survey that we ask you to help us fill up. It's a very short survey, which my colleague will paste the link in the Facebook comment box. And uh, you should help us uh, click on that and answer that short survey. Just a short disclaimer, the Institute provides unbiased financial education, so we are not to give financial advice or opinion. If you should want to act on any information that you hear this afternoon through this talk, you are highly advised to consult a licensed financial advisor before making your decision to invest or to act on uh, the information this afternoon. Before we go to the talk proper, let's do a short poll to get us warm up. The question is, are you ready for retirement? If you look at your Facebook page, uh, web page, there should be two box, yes and no. Simply use your finger to tap either answer to indicate your answer to this poll. I will close this poll in a minute or so and then I'll share with you the collective decision. So go ahead and key in your answer now. What do I mean by retirement? And when you ask these questions to different people, you will get different answer. A common answer that I get when I ask this question is, I do not want to work anymore, or I've stopped work for the rest of my life. That is retirement. Why do people say that? because working could be stressful. And when we are working, we are always yearning for the day we no longer work. So we think of retirement as the day where we no need to work anymore for the rest of our life. But is it realistic? What would you do with your time? Some will say, I would like to travel the world. Some would say, I would like to spend time with my family. But traveling will not take up all of your time. Your family will also grow older. And then if that's the case, what would else would you do to keep yourself engaged and fulfilled, especially if you have spent a lifetime gathering, gaining skills and expertise. So think about that for a moment. So the majority of you this afternoon say yes to the question, are you ready for retirement? That's good, which means to say that you have given this subject quite a bit of thinking and you are ready to jump into the details, details of it. So hopefully over the next 30 minutes, I will take you through some of the basic precepts of CPF and how you can use CPF to be retirement ready. When we are talking about retirement, in retirement planning, we often speak about three basic pillars or your three basic needs. The most basic one is housing. So when you are in retirement, you should have your home settled, uh, the place where you want to age in place, and hopefully by that time, the mortgage on your home is paid for so that there's no more financial obligation. Most of us will have a somewhat bigger home throughout our life as uh, our family grow. However, as we get older and our children uh, leave uh, to set up their own family, our housing needs may change. So there could be opportunities for you to right size your housing uh, to provide you a suitable place in retirement, and at the same time, contribute some income to your retirement uh, savings. Second pillar is healthcare, healthcare needs. Singaporeans and PR have CPF, MediShield Life, which is now compulsory, which should take care of your basic hospitalization need should you fall ill and need to be hospitalized. 
There are other CPF healthcare insurance, such as dependent protection scheme, and also elder shield, which could take care of your other healthcare needs. What you should then think about is, are these enough, sufficient for you? Do you need to purchase more healthcare insurance to cover other additional needs that you may have? Then you need to think about how much that's going to cost you. And that leads us to the third aspect of retirement adequacy, and that is how much do you need in retirement and how are you going to pay for your retirement expenses in terms of your retirement savings. So these three basic tenets are important in retirement plan. Today, we are just going to focus on retirement income and expenses. So when you think about retirement expenses, retirement income to pay for those expenses, it is useful to think of it in two components. One component is your basic essential needs. What are basic essential needs? This could be lodging, food, maybe transportation, personal welfare, healthcare. These are the needs that are basic essential and you need to take care of it for the rest of your life. And these basic essential needs should preferably be paid for by what we refer to as your paycheck. So the idea of a paycheck means that a regular income stream, an income stream that is fixed and will continue to come monthly every month for as long as you live. So this paycheck and regular income stream should pay for your basic needs. In this example, it is $1,400 per month, which can be taken care of by CPF life, full retirement sum. However, in life to live only basic needs and to live in a simple way, fashion might be a bit spartan and a bit boring. So we yearn for the additional things in life that will make us happier. What we refer to as luxury items, the good to have, okay? So this could be an expensive holiday, overseas holiday, an expensive hobby that you may have. Because these are luxury good to have items, this should preferably be paid for by what we call play check. And this idea is that these additional luxury expenses should be paid for by additional savings, investment, and even part-time work on top of your basic income, right? So in this example, it is about $1,100 a month. So in this example, someone who wants to retire uh, with $2,500 a month uh, should think about his basic needs, which can be taken care of by CPF Life, $1,400. And then the other luxury needs to be taken care of by his other income stream and other savings. And should things don't turn out well, for example, no more part-time work or the investment don't work out as well, the income stream may shrink, maybe less. Then in which case, some of the luxury expenses or luxury needs can then be cut back. So this is the idea of thinking about your retirement expenses in terms of essential paycheck and then the luxury one in terms of paycheck. How does CPF prepare you for retirement? So as we all know, as you are working, you and your employer both contribute monies into your CPF accounts. So there are three different CPF accounts. We'll come to that later. And basically, your special account, which is to prepare you for retirement, earns you up to a 5% interest. And the savings will then compound over time, which means that you will grow with compounded interest year on year on year. And then when you are 65, this retirement savings can then be converted into what we referred to just now as your paycheck by joining CPF Life and annuity, whereby you will receive a monthly payout every month for as long as you live. What are the accounts that we are talking about? So we all are familiar with ordinary account, which can be used to pay for your housing mortgage, some of your uh, insurance needs like uh, dependent protection scheme, a special account, which is primarily set aside for retirement, and your Medisave account, which can be used to pay for premium for your hospitalization plan like MediShield Life and also other hospitalization insurance like Eldershield. And then there's the retirement account. What is this? For those of you who are below 55 years of age, there won't be a retirement account. The retirement account is open when you reach 55 
and his CPF way of wishing you happy 55. Welcome to the club, right? So that is the retirement account. The ordinary account pays an interest of 2.5% per annum. The special, MediSafe, and then subsequently the retirement account all pay interest of 4% per annum. On top of this basic interest, there is the additional interest, the bonus interest. The first 60,000 of your combined CPF balances, whether in ordinary, special, MediSafe, or retirement, will earn an extra 1% interest. And for those who are 55 and above, the, the first 30,000 okay, will earn another additional 1%. Okay? Which means to say, if you are below 55, you can earn up to 5% per annum. right? And if you are above 55, you can earn up to 6% per annum on the respective accounts. And that's not something to be scoffed at, especially in today's context, whereby interest rates are very low, four, five, six percent per annum, fixed and guaranteed is something which is uh, very difficult to come by. If you are continuing to work after 55, and some of us do that by choice, then you will realize, you will realize that there will be CPF contributions into your ordinary, special, and MediSafe account, what we affectionately call OSAMA. However, if you are above 55, if you take a look at this table on the left-hand side, you would realize that the total contribution rate would start to drop, okay, from 37% to 26, 16.5, 12.5, above 55. Not only that, the allocation of the CPF contribution every month into your OSAMA account will also move more towards special and medicine, which means to say your ordinary account will, will accrete less and less over time. So don't be surprised that when you are 55, you'll find that you have less uh, accretion into your ordinary account, and that may impact you in terms of your mortgage service. Good news. In the National Day Rally in 2019, it was announced that there would be further changes to the CPF contribution rate to support, uh, strength, strengthen the support for older workers. What it means is that the retirement re-employment age today at 62 will, sorry, at 67 will progressively increase to 70 by 2030. The CPF contribution rates will also progressively increase and the long-term target is to hit 37 in the 55 to 60 age range, 28 in the 60 to 65 age range, and 16.5 in the 65 to 70 age range. For more information, please look at the MOM website and CPF website regarding these changes that are coming up. Please do note that despite the changing changes to the re-employment age, there is no change, no change to the CPF withdrawal policies and withdrawal ages, okay? So it's important to remember that. Your retirement account and how does your retirement account work to provide for your retirement needs? So first and foremost, you need to remember that the retirement account is only open on your 51st birthday. And once that account is open, sums of money from your ordinary and special account will be transferred into this retirement account, starting first with your special account. And the amount that will be transferred by default is what is known as the full retirement sum. For those members who are turning 55 in 2020 this year, the full retirement sum for your cohort is $181,000. The first $5,000 remaining in your ordinary or special account, regardless if you have $5,000, is always something you can withdraw, right? So that's been the rule for a very long time. Any amount that is then in excess of this full retirement sum, it's something that you can withdraw after you turn 55 at any point in time of your choosing. So you don't have to rush to withdraw the money. If you keep the monies uh, in your ordinary and special account on top of the full retirement sum, it would continue to earn 2.5% and 4%. And as you continue to work beyond 55, more contribution will go into ordinary and special accounts. And you can withdraw this amount above the full retirement sum at any one point in time. 
how does the retirement account then take care of your monthly paycheck? So, and 55 amount savings equals to your full retirement sum is set up in your retirement account. This sum is then kept there to compound over time at the interest rate of 4% up to 65 years old. So when you turn 65, this sum can then be converted into a monthly retirement payout. And if it is CPF life, this monthly retirement payout will be for as long as you live. Now between 55 and 65, it's 10 years. So if you have set aside uh, this sum of monies, in that 10 years, the compounding rate would increase your full retirement sum by something in excess of 40%. 40%, okay? So if you have $1,000 at age 55, that $1,000 will grow to $1,400 at age 65. Monthly paycheck, CPF life payout. How much is it? And how does it take care of your retirement? So let's make an assumption that this is based on what is called the CPF life standard plan. CPF life standard plan computed as at this year, 2020. So there are different levels of payout corresponding to different amounts of retirement account saving. So the most basic is 90,500, which is known as the basic retirement sum. And that would correspond to a CPF life payout of 750 to $810. Two times of your basic retirement sum is the full retirement sum or about 1,800. $181,000, and that would correspond to a monthly CPF life payout of about $1,390 to $1,490. Three times of the basic retirement sum would be the enhanced retirement sum, and it would be $271,500 based on today's estimate of someone who reached 55 years old, and that would correspond to a monthly CPF payout, life payout of $2,030 to $2,180. What if you have $120,000? Okay, so if you have $120,000, then the payout correspond to this $120,000 is between $960 to $1,030. What if you have less than that and if you only have $60,000? If you have $60,000 and that sum would correspond to a payout of about 540 to 580. Do take note that if you have not met the basic retirement sum, in this case of 90,500, you do not need to top it up, all right? You just need to accumulate it uh, over the course of the next 10 years as you continue to contribute monies into the CPF accounts from your employment. If you choose to withdraw more savings, Right, then you need to leave behind the minimum of 90,500 or basic retirement sum. What do I mean by that? So for someone with 120,000, if he wants to receive that as a monthly payout in CPF life, that will correspond to about $1,000. But if we say at age 55 that, no, I want to withdraw some money and how much can I withdraw? So he can withdraw the difference of 120 minus 90,500, approximately $30,000, leaving 90,500 as the basic retirement sum in his retirement account. And the condition for that is that the person must have a piece of property, eligible property that can be pledged to himself under the CPF rules. What if you sell your property after 55, especially if you have pledged a property in the basic retirement sum? Now, if you have used your CPF savings to buy a property in the past, either to pay down payment or to pay off the mortgage, then when you sell your property, the principal amount withdrawn for the property over the years, plus the accrued interest has to be refunded into your CPF account. Plus any amounts that was withdrawn from the retirement account, Remember, we said that uh, if you want to withdraw more monies, you can. The minimum you have to set aside is the basic retirement sum. Then any amounts that you've withdrawn above the basic retirement sum has also to be refunded before the rest of the funds can then be used to pay, uh, pay back to you. And the amounts will be used to set aside the full retirement sum 
in your retirement account. And then the balance will be given to you in cash. So if you have no property, means you sold your property, then your retirement account must have the minimum of the full retirement sum. Should you choose to buy another piece of property after that, that's fine. You just withdraw the relevant amounts to pay for the property, pledge the property uh, back to uh, the basic retirement sum, and then uh, you can continue. The property must be eligible and should have lease that should cover you to at least 95 years of age. What if you want higher payouts? So instead of 120,000, you want more monthly CPF life payout. So if you desire, let's say $2,000 payout because you have ascertained that your paycheck and your basic, basic retirement expenses is about $2,000, then you can top up your CPF retirement account up to the maximum amount of the enhanced retirement sum. Do pay attention that only those people above 55 are able to top up monies into their retirement account because only above 55, then you will have a retirement account. So if you top up to 271,000, the enhanced retirement sum, then you will be able to enjoy a higher payout of $2,000 a month. So you should think about your retirement adequacy and uh, CPF life payout in these terms. How much do you want to set aside? How much do you want the amount you set aside to pay you for your basic expenses? If it is about $1,000 a month, then the retirement account saving, you should have about $120,000. If it is about $2,000 a month, then your retirement savings should be about $270,000. So you should make this comparison and you should make this calculation on your own. It is good when you are thinking about retirement to know the options available to you ahead of time. So for those that are turning 55 this year, next year, or if you're like me, turning 55 in 2022, then these are the basic retirement sums applicable to your cohort and the full retirement sum and the enhanced retirement sum. Those who are turning 55 after 2022 would have to wait a little bit more for the government to announce the new amounts after 2022. So once you know the basic retirement sum and, and, and the full and enhanced retirement sum for your cohort, then you can make decisions ahead of time to decide how much you may want to set aside for your retirement. There are some new additional schemes that have been introduced and one of them is the match retirement saving scheme mrss this is a top up dollar for dollar matching scheme by the government to encourage eligible members to increase their retirement savings okay and the government will match dollar for dollar subject to an annual cap of six hundred dollars from next year onwards for five years up to 2025 so if you make an eligible cash top up into your retirement account, the government will match that top up up to $600 a year. No action is required from you to apply. You will receive notification at the end of the first quarter of each year if you qualify for the scheme. So what are the eligibility criteria? Number one, it is for members who are between 55 to 70 years of age. Older members probably already are more advanced in terms of their uh, retirement uh, savings plan. And these eligible members should have retirement RA savings of less than the prevailing basic retirement sum. So since the scheme starts next year, in 2021, we know that the basic retirement sum is 93,000. So which means to say members between 55 to 70 years of age with less than $93,000 in their retirement account earning less than $400 monthly income and annual value of the property less than 13,000. What is annual value of residence? This is something which is you can find from your property tax. Look at your property tax statement. There will be an annual value assessed for your property. Too complicated if you live in a HDB flat or HDB flat will be below $13,000 of annual value. In fact, some condos are also below that amount. So if you live in the HDB flat, you're quite certain that the annual value will meet this criteria. 
Plus, you cannot own more than one property. So on top of the HDB flat that you live in, you cannot own a private property, for example. And if you meet this eligibility criteria and the dollar for dollar top up will apply, again, you don't have to apply for it because this is something that uh, will be informed to you if you are eligible. Now let's talk a little bit about life expectancy and how CPF can cater to this risk of uh, increased life expectancy. We all know that Singapore is an aging society. More and more people are growing old. Today at age 65, if you look around, one in two of us will reach the age of 85. And one in three will reach the age of 90. For myself, both my parents-in-law and my mother are between 83 to 85 years of age. My late father passed away some years ago. So in my simple example, three out of my four parent-parent-in-law are going to reach or have reached the life expectancy of 85. So it is true that you know, more and more people will reach and exceed this age. If you retire at age 65, it means 20 years, 20 years of living in retirement. What if your savings is not enough? What if you outlive your savings? So that's where CPF life or what is commonly known as an annuity takes care of that issue. So with your retirement savings at age 65, you can choose your level of CPF payout based on the CPF life scheme. And then the CPF retirement savings will be paid out every month for as long as you live, even after your own retirement savings has run out. So this is provided you are eligible to participate in the CPF life scheme. So you will guarantee that you will have a payout every month for as long as you live. How should you choose the scheme and what schemes should you choose? How does the timeline work? So at age 55, you make a decision to set aside the requisite amount of retirement sum. By the time you reach 65, if you have at least 60,000 in your retirement account, you will be eligible to join CPF Life. And you have five years to choose CPF Life payout to start, either at age 65 or 66 or so on and so forth to age 70. 70 years old is the final age after which you will automatically be put on standard plan and payout will start at age 70. So you have five years to decide whether you want the payout to start or not. And then once the payout is started, this payout will continue lifelong for as long as you live. There are three CPF life plans that you could choose from. Standard, escalating, and basic. The escalating plan is like the standard plan, except that you receive more monthly payout later and you start with lower monthly payout at the beginning and this payout increases 2% per year. It is a plan for those who are more concerned about inflation and uh, de deteriorating purchasing power. The basic payout will give you lower monthly payout and the standard payout plan will give you a slightly higher monthly payout. So the standard plans are for those who desire a slightly higher amount of monthly payout compared to the basic plan. The more you draw every month whilst you're alive, it also means that your beneficiary when you pass away will receive less. And so therefore the standard plan compared to the basic plan will have less bequests for your beneficiary should you pass away before your CPF life premiums are used up. So you have these three plans to choose from and choose based on your needs and expenses level. How does CPF life work? So at age 65, your CPF life premiums uh, or the amounts inside your retirement accounts are then contributed as CPF life premium into a CPF life premium pool. You will then start to receive payout every month from the CPF life premium pool first. And when that runs out, you will still continue to receive payout lifelong from the interest that's accumulated collectively by all the members in the pool, even after your own CPF life premium contribution have been exhausted. So that's how 
the CPF Life pool works by pooling together all our savings and then using the interest from the pool to pay members beyond their exhaustion of their CPF Life premium uh, all the way to they die. Okay? Should you pass on and uh, there's still CPF Life premium balance remaining in your CPF account or in the CPF Life pool, these balances will then be bequeathed to your beneficiaries based on your CPF nomination. So it's very important that you make a CPF nomination so that your beneficiaries can receive whatever amounts of money is left behind by you in the CPF accounts. If you desire for higher payouts, then you can defer the payout age. Every year that you defer will increase the payout amount every month by about 7%. So as an illustration, at 65, let's say you have a monthly payout of $1,490. You choose to defer that until age 70. By deferring for five years means that you choose not to receive the payout early. By age 70, you will then start to receive $2,000 instead every month for the rest of your life. So $2,000 is almost is $500 more than you would receive if you had started the payout earlier at 65. So deferring the payout is one way to increase the monthly amount. What other aspects of the retirement account? Well, if you want greater flexibility in the management of your retirement savings at age 65, you can choose to withdraw 20%, up to 20% of your retirement account balance. And then you can use that money to, let's say, uh, pay for a small business or go on a religious holiday or whatever expenses that you have uh, plans for. But do remember that if you do withdraw that 20% at age 65, then there will be less money left in your retirement account and therefore your payout for life will also be reduced. So in this example, uh, someone with $272,900 would have received $1,490 per month for the rest of their life, but choose to withdraw 20% to apply for whatever expenses that they have. Then after that, that amount will be reduced to $223,300. Right. That would then correspond to a lower amount of 1230 every month for the rest of their life. So when you do withdraw monies out of the retirement account, do take note that you will receive less payout. Which CPF life plan should you choose? That really depends on your own pro projection of your lifestyle. What do you want to do? Your uh, other savings that you have and how much is your expenses. So think of it in terms of two components, the basic expenses and the luxury expenses. How do you estimate how much payout? So you can go to the CPF website, click on tools, choose CPF Life Estimator, and then key in all the details. And the CPF Life Estimator will tell you how much every month you are expected to receive as monthly payout for the amount of projected retirement account savings that you have. How do you start your payout? So before your payout eligibility age, for most of us here will be 65, you will receive a letter to inform you that you can start your payout anytime. Okay, simply activate that payout by mailing in the completed form or you can go online to submit an online form. Your payout will be credited into your bank account via interbank gyro by the fourth working day of each month. Your monthly payout will start automatically if you have not made such instruction at age 70. So do remember, you can make a choice from 65 onwards until age 70 to start your payout. The more years you defer your payout, the bigger every month you will receive in terms of a payout when it starts. How can you find out more information about your CPF accounts and connect with CPF? You can download My CPF app from the App Store and this App Store uh, will have, have this app. And, and using this app, you can find out how much money you have in your CPF account and you can also interact with uh, CPF form. For more information, do visit the CPF website at cpf.gov.sg, write to CPF board or call them at 1-800-227-1188. Other useful websites are MoneySense and Institute for Financial Literacy, 
ifl.org.sg. Now we are ready for the question and answer segment. Do drop your questions into the Facebook comment section. Okay, so questions are coming in. Okay, the first question is quite long. It has uh, two parts. So I'm going to read out the question and then I'm going to digest and then uh, try to answer it. So the question is pertaining to the accrued interest plus CPF principal in the CPF account. If I am 55 years and above and has set aside full retirement sum into the retirement account. So this person has, uh, is above 55 and has set aside full retirement sum in his retirement account. Do I still need to return principal plus interest accrued into my CPF account if I sell my flat? Since I can withdraw whatever excess fund in CPF account, FRS has been set aside. So if you have set aside your full retirement sum, then the answer is that you do not need to top up anymore into your retirement account. Okay, But whenever you sell property, the monies will always come back to the CPF accounts first. That's, that's always the, the basic principle. And then from the CPF accounts, you can choose to withdraw it if you are eligible to withdraw amount that amount. So in your case, if you have set aside a full retirement account, you full retirement sum in your retirement account, you sell your property, the monies will be refunded into your CPF account, and then you can then withdraw from those CPF accounts because you've already set aside the full retirement sum. It is actually a good thing. Why? Because putting money back into the CPF account is not as easy as you would imagine. So this sets a, sets a way for the monies to automatically come back into the CPF account. And as long as the money stays in your CPF account, you continue to earn the 2.5 or 4% interest rate. And then if you are eligible to withdraw it later on, then you can choose to withdraw at any one point in time. So if you so desire. Second part of the question is, in the event that there's no sale of my flat and I've reached 65, start to receive CPF life payout, what will happen to the CPF principal accrued standing in my account, written off automatically, any impact on my monthly cash flow? Okay, so if you didn't sell your flat and you reach 65, then what you have in your retirement account is your full retirement sum. So that amount will be subscribed into the CPF life scheme and based on the scheme you plan you choose, will pay you every month a sum of money corresponding to that plan and the full retirement sum from 65 to the rest of your life. All right. So the remaining amount of money remains in the respective CPF ordinary, special accounts, and MediSafe account. You can choose to withdraw monies from those as and when, as long as you meet the eligible criteria. There's no write-off of monies. Huh? So the monies is yours. Either you subscribe them into the CPF life or you get to withdraw it. How can you make a CPF nomination? That's important. I often encourage members to do so. I think the statistics is less than 50% have actually made a CPF nomination or that around there, there about. Making a CPF nomination is easy and free. By default, CPF nomination pays out to your beneficiary in cash. Easiest way is to download the form from the CPF website Fill up the names of your beneficiary, the personal details, the IC number, how to contact them, and allocate the percentages beside this beneficiary. Make sure that the total percent adds up to 100%. Get two witnesses above uh, age 21 to sign. These witnesses cannot be the beneficiary and preferably should not be related by marriage to the beneficiary. To sign and then submit the form to CPF board and CPA board will inform you when the nomination is made. With recent changes, you can also make a nomination, you can also make an authorized person uh, nomination, meaning to say that you can authorize someone to write to the CPA board to find out how much CPF you have in the accounts and who are the beneficiary. Okay, this authorized person will be able to go to CPA board to get this information after you passed away. Your nominees will not get this information automatically. With COVID-19 and all that, you can also do online nomination. And uh, this online nomination can be done using SingPass. 
So you just need to go to the CPF website, uh, key in the details through your SingPass, and then uh, nominate your witness. Your witnesses will get a notification within to go into the system with their sync pass to witness your nomination within seven days. So you can make a uh, CPF online nomination as well. Very easy. And the default is pay cash to your beneficiary. There are two other nomination methods, but those you need to go to the CPF branch office. And that is the special needs saving scheme and the enhanced CPF nomination. By default, it is cash. Next question. I am above 55 and have previously withdrawn my CPF for housing. Can I put back this withdrawn money into my CPF to earn interest? Would this money go back to CPF into my ordinary or special account? So actually, money is withdrawn for CPF housing. Uh, money is withdrawn from CPF for your housing can be refunded into your CPF account anytime, whether you are above 55 or not and the monies will be refunded to the accounts from which it was drawn from. Most likely, all of us are from the ordinary account. If you are above 55, the advantage is that having refunded that money into your CPF ordinary account, you can choose then to withdraw that money later on if you have met the full retirement sum or the basic retirement sum uh, or the withdrawal eligibility criteria. And in the meantime, the monies are sitting in the ordinary account earning 2.5%. Okay, so I thought I made that clear to you. Next question. If we have not choose the enhanced CPF retirement scheme, I'm now 61 plus, can I be able to increase my retirement sum? Okay, so it's not called enhanced retirement scheme, just so that not to be confused with enhanced CPF uh, nomination, okay, is uh, the, the enhanced retirement sum, enhanced retirement sum, enhanced retirement sum, okay, enhanced retirement sum. So the enhanced retirement sum is three times the basic retirement sum. Now, if you have not chosen the enhanced retirement sum, you can always top up monies into your retirement account to reach the enhanced retirement sum anytime after you turn 55. So you're 61 plus now, you can still top up monies into your retirement account to reach the enhanced retirement sum. In fact, even after you have started withdrawing from your uh, CPF life pool at 65, you can still top up monies into your uh, uh, retirement account uh, to increase your CPF life contribution. If you're not sure exactly how to uh, do that administratively, please do give CPF board a call. Okay, so yes, you can, you can increase the CPF retirement uh, sums anytime after age 55, all the way up to the enhanced retirement sum. Next question. Can I join CPF live after 65? Yes, the last age that you can join CPF live is before your 80th birthday, before your 80th birthday. Can I top up my existing retirement account using money from the ordinary account? Yes, you can transfer money from your ordinary account to top up your full your retirement account all the way to your enhanced retirement sum. I'm 71 years old now. Can I top up my retirement account for my OA? Yes, as I mentioned earlier, you can transfer money from your ordinary account to your retirement account to top up the uh, uh, money is to the enhanced retirement sum. Not to forget, if you are working from 55 all the way onwards, you continue to contribute monies in the ordinary account. So your ordinary account will also continue to build up. Next question. Can I only start to draw on my retirement fund at age 68? Yes. So at age 65, you will receive a letter from CPF board. Don't make the, make the election then. Wait until you are 68 years old, then submit the form. Or go online at 68 years old. And then the payout will start at age 68. If you forget or you do not do anything by age 70, it will automatically start. If you want to start earlier, just submit the form anytime from age 65. 
Next question. Some people say if you don't live up to 82 or so, it is not wise to choose enhanced retirement sum because the interest your CPF earned will not be returned to your beneficiaries. 82, the magic number. With due respect to the religious out there, if I'm God, I would be able to answer this question because the reality, the reality is that we do not know how long we will live to, right? Is 82 the age? Is 85 the age? Is 90 the age? Or is it 65, 61? You really do not know. So statistically, it is true that we live to the life expectancy age, which is roughly about 85, right? So we should plan for at least 85 and beyond. But the reality is we do not know. So I suggest you think of your retirement adequacy in terms of the amount of basic expenses that you need every month to pay for, right? And based on that basic expenses every month, what is the retirement account you need? And then set up your retirement account with your retirement sums according to that number, right? So try not to play God and uh, guess how long we will live to. There's an earlier question which has not been answered is, will housing loan interest continue to accrue when we reach 55? So this question is not uh, very clear. Uh, let me guess what I think the question is, okay? So we have to refund monies that we withdraw for housing, either down payment or payments of principal and interest of our housing loan. And when we sell our property, these amounts have to be refunded back to our CPF account. And the amounts refunded back is calculated based on the principal withdrawn and the accrued interest. And that accrued interest will be accrued if you withdraw the money from ordinary account at 2.5% per annum. If you do not know how much that is, go to the CPF account. They will tell you what your housing withdrawal amount is. That amount accrued will continue to accrue as long as that monies have not been refunded into your CPF account. Okay, right? But if you are already 55 and beyond, right? And you have set aside the full retirement sum, then that is not really that relevant because you can always withdraw the monies that get refunded into your CPF account. Okay? It's only relevant for those that are younger than 55 because the money is refunded in, you cannot withdraw until you are at least 55. So once you're past 55, that accrual is not that important to you anymore. Okay, next question. Can I revert my payout to 70 years old even though I have received my payout at age 67? I think that question needs to be checked with CPF board because it's an administrative question. So once you re start receiving your payout, my understanding is that you would continue to receive that payout. You cannot stop and say, I, I withdraw, uh, I continue a few years later. But I do suggest you check with CPF board. Bottom line is do be quite careful uh, about your planning and choose to withdraw or choose your payout to start at the time that you need the monies, okay? Next question. I reach 55. Can I choose to close my CPF ordinary account and transfer all the funds to CPF retirement account to earn higher interest? Okay, you cannot close a CPF account, right? Your Osama account will be with you till you reach 55. At 55, you have a RA retirement account and after that, that four accounts will remain with you all the way till the day you pass on. So you cannot choose to close your CPF account. But you can choose to transfer money from your CPF accounts to another account. You can do that to your Medisafe uh, or to your retirement account to earn higher interest. But do remember that monies you transfer from your ordinary account to your retirement account is not reversible. So you cannot say, when you reach 65 to say, I changed my mind, I now want to withdraw that money. So think very carefully, transfer the money into your retirement account only if you're very sure that this is the money you want to set aside for your retirement and uh, to receive that as a monthly payout from age 65 or later every month uh, for as long as you live. Okay, so it's not reversible. I did not meet the minimum retirement sum when I reached 65. 
Okay, so uh, I assume here you are saying basic retirement sum. Okay, that's the terminology is basic retirement sum. If you reach 65, you did not reach the basic retirement sum. So if I sell my flat, what then? Okay, so the minimum in the retirement account is the full retirement sum. If you want to withdraw money below that, then the least you must set aside it's the basic retirement sum provided you have a property. So a property, with a property, you can withdraw monies and setting aside only the basic retirement sum. Now, if you have no property, then the minimum is the full retirement sum. So the answer to your question is, it doesn't matter what the amounts you have below, minimum, below the full retirement sum. When you sell your flat, the proceeds first will be ref uh, refunded back to your CPF account and amount will be transferred to your retirement account to restore that amount to the full retirement sum and then the balance you can withdraw from it. But if you choose to buy another property, then you can withdraw from those CPF accounts to pay for the property and the property, uh, but make sure that you have minimum of the basic retirement sum in your retirement account, okay? Next question, I am over 55. Okay, so you're over 55. I top up cash in ordinary account and then there are, thereafter withdraw. Will the cash withdraw from the ordinary account or special account? The cash, assuming you've met the minimum, oh, sorry. Assuming you have met the uh, retirement sums that you choose to set aside and uh, met the eligibility, withdrawal eligibility criteria, then the amounts that are withdrawn will always come from the higher interest account first. So you will start with your special account. If, I, if a couple have no children, do they still need to make a CPF nomination? Well, if a couple have no children, uh, the question to ask is, if the couple passes on, who do they want their CPF monies to go to? If it is a couple, husband and wife, husband normally will say go to the wife, wife will say go to the husband, right? But what if husband and wife went away on a holiday and don't come back together at all, right? So these monies, who do they want the monies to go to? Uh, and that would be the basis for their CPF nomination. It could be a next of kin. It could be a family member. It could be a charity or charitable organization. So the couple has to decide, okay? Actually, when you are making CPF nomination, it's always good to plan ahead. So for example, the couple have children, okay? So uh, it is good uh, to make plans or nomination for both the spouse and the children. Many couples will say that I want the money to go to my surviving spouse and my surviving spouse will then look after my, my children. Fine, but what if the surviving spouse is also not around? So therefore, when you're making nomination, should consider further, the majority of the money should go to the surviving spouse, if that's your intent, leaving behind a very small percentage, one or two percent, to your children. Why is that important? Because if the surviving spouse do not survive, then the children automatically will step up to inherit the full sum of the nominations you have made. Otherwise, if the surviving spouse is not around, then there's no CPF nomination and that monies will go to uh, public trustee's office to be distributed according to intestate law. There are some fees to be paid and uh, administratively much more cumbersome. Next question. When I start CPF life from my retirement account at age 70, okay, so that's the last age that you can start your payout. What happens to my OASA balance? Can I leave them to with CPF to earn interest? Yes, yes. You, you cannot close the account. Remember what I said? You can only transfer monies from one account to another. Plus, if you continue to work, there will be monies coming into those accounts, Osama accounts, on a regular basis. And you can also do cash top-ups in, into those accounts, right? So those accounts will remain, the balances in those accounts will remain and they'll continue to earn the CPF interest rate at either 2.5 or 4%, whichever account there is. And then you can only, you can withdraw them as and when you need the money, okay? So you don't need to withdraw the monies, all the monies from the CPF account. The last thing you want to do is to withdraw the monies from your CPF account 
paying you between 2.5% and 4% and then put the money into POSB, earning you 0%. Do you follow? Okay, so it's better to keep it in a CPF account, earning 25 to 4%. For those above 70 years who have drawn ordinary balances for purchase of housing, can they the, we, we refund the withdrawn amount plus interest back to ordinary account? Yes, yes. You can refund the monies that you have withdrawn for housing uh, anytime. Okay. Next question. At 65, I still have the special account. Yes, you will have that special account even after 65. I also have the retirement account. Yes. Can the money in the special account be drawn out? If you meet the eligibility criteria, yes. In fact, if you meet the eligibility criteria, you can withdraw the money from the special account even before 65. The earliest you can withdraw is 55. Okay? So as long as you have set aside the requisite retirement sums in your retirement account, maybe full retirement sum, the default, or uh, amounts not less than the basic retirement sum plus the property. How to see the amount eligible under property top up? Go to your CPF account and look under CPF withdrawn or C withdrawn for property. They will tell you what is the principal amount withdrawn and what is the accrued interest. Go to your CPF account. Online, you should be able to find that. In addition, my earlier question, is there a minimum or maximum we can top up for enhanced retirement sum? The maximum in your retirement account, okay, below age 65, is the enhanced retirement sum, the prevailing enhanced retirement sum. So your enhanced retirement sum could be lower because every year the retirement sum changes. Once you hit your enhanced retirement sum, then you have to wait one more year for the prevailing enhanced retirement sum to increase by a few more percent. Then you can top up a little bit more to reach that new prevailing enhanced retirement sum. Okay, so the cohort retirement sum is different from the prevailing retirement sum. I was told by CPF if we transfer the amount from the ordinary retirement account, there will, there will not be interest earned. Okay, the question is more complicated than that. If you transfer monies from the ordinary to the retirement account, okay, right? So the monies then move to your retirement account. The interest earned in the retirement account is 4% plus whatever bonus that you are entitled to. If you reach 65, that amount in the retirement sum in your retirement account is then transferred to fund the CPF life premium pool. Remember the slide transfer at 65 to fund the CPF life premium pool. If you all that sum in your retirement account is transferred to the fund, the pre, CPF life premium pool, then edi, any additional interest earned on that sum of money in that CPF life premium pool will stay inside that pool. You cannot, you cannot take back again, because that money is not in your retirement account anymore. It is in the CPF life premium pool. Why is the CPF interest earned in the life premium pool staying in the pool? Because the interest earned collectively will use to pay to those members that survive beyond the expectancy, life expectancy. So when your, your own CPF contribution into the premium pool expires, you stop at the age, I don't know, maybe 85, 90 or, or beyond, you still continue to receive that payout every month. Where is that money coming from? It's coming from the collective interest earned on the premium pool. So CPF bought probably explained to you this way. Uh, you shortcut it to ask this question. Okay, right? So monies in the retirement account always earn interest, right? It is the monies that you're transferred into the CPF live premium pool. The interest earned on that money stays inside the pool. The principal that you transferred though, the principal amount that was transferred from your retirement account though, if you pass on before that amount is used up, that principal amount will be bequeathed to your beneficiaries based on the CPF nomination. Okay, I know it's all quite complicated, okay? So whatever principal amount belonging to you will be bequeathed to your beneficiaries. The interest earned in the collective pool stays in the pool. 
Next question. I'm 52. If I transfer all my money, ordinary cash top up to special account, you can only do that up to the full retirement sum. Okay? You can only do cash top up and, and ordinary transfer up to the full retirement sum. What will happen if I decided to buy a house at age 56? Yes, then you can still withdraw money from your retirement account to pay for your house. But then you must keep aside minimum of the basic retirement sum. Minimum of the basic retirement sum. So that rule is a little bit different uh, before you turn 55 and after you turn 55. Okay? So before you, you, you turn 55, you can use uh, uh, more monies from your ordinary account. There are a lot of CPF, a lot of questions, but uh, we really don't have time to answer all the questions. So I'll try to answer as many as possible before we end. Next question. Is it better to save money in CPF or save it in the bank instead? So money you save in the CPF, first of all, earns a higher interest rate between 2.5 to 4%. So that's number one. Number two, okay, the bank, the bank, the bank itself, it's a... Uh, more riskier or riskier counterparty. In Singapore, up to $75,000 of bank deposits are guaranteed by the government under the deposit insurance scheme. Above $75,000, if the bank were to go bankrupt, that money might go with the bank. Monies in CPF are guaranteed by the government. Okay, so if you ask me, then the answer is yes, it's got higher interest, better counterparty risk, better risk, but if you are below 55, of course, then you have less options to use that money. If you are above 55, then you have more options to use that money. So in terms of uh, liquidity, uh, it is better to uh, put it in the bank compared to CPF if you are younger than 55. How about money in a special account? Can it be transferred to retirement account? Yes. Up to the enhanced retirement sum up to the enhanced retirement sum. Does CPF nomination cover the CPF investment account balances? No. CPF nomination only covers monies and Singtel shares inside your CPF account, including unused CPF life premium. CPF investment account, CPF investment account has to be covered under your will. Similarly, insurances bought with CPF monies have to be covered under the insurance nomination or your will. Next question. Let's say I have reached the enhanced retirement sum. Can I still top up my ordinary account and special account? Okay. So there are different ways you can do CPF top up. One, it's a regular top up regular contribution every year, subject to the total contribution, I think right now is about $35,000. So that, that's the contribution you, you contribute uh, from your regular monthly salaries or income. So that's one way to top up your CPF accounts. And you will go to your ordinary, special and MediSafe account according to your, to your age. So that's one way. The second way to top up is directly into your retirement account or special account. So that's known as the retirement sum top-up scheme. You can only top up into your retirement account if you have above 55, and you can only top up into your special account if you're below 55. And if you're below 55, the amount you can top up by cash, it's up to the full retirement sum. If you're above 55, then the amount you can top up is the enhanced retirement sum. Of course, you can also transfer money from your ordinary and special, special accounts. Right? But remember, the transfer is not reversible. Okay? So I hope I have answered your question. Right? So if you reach the enhanced retirement sum, I, I, I must assume you are above 55 years old, so you can no longer do the regular, not, not regular, the, en, uh, the retirement sum top-up scheme. So you have to wait until next year when the, enhanced, the prevailing enhanced retirement sum increase, then you can top up the, the difference. But you can continue to still make CPF contribution, but you will go into your ordinary, special, and MediSafe account. Next question. I'm 72 years old and have received funds from CPF a few years ago. 
Can I now deposit into my CPF account when I have been the max sum held by CPF board? Okay. So I'm rephrase the question. You are 72 years old and have withdrawn some monies from CPF and also received monthly payout from your CPF retirement account. And uh, now the question is, can you put money into back into your CPF account? So as I mentioned, there are two ways you can, you can put money back in the CPF account. One is by regular contribution, okay? Uh, that will go into your ordinary, special and uh, MediSafe account. One is by retirement sum top up scheme. Okay, so that will go directly into your retirement account and that limit is subject to the enhanced retirement sum. So you can put money into your retirement account up to the enhanced retirement sum. But because you've already started your payout, the board will then recalculate what your new payout would be every month if you were to top up directly into the enhanced retirement sum, uh, top up directly into the retirement account. If I join CPF Life at age 66, is it I will earn interest because the interest goes into the pool? Is it I will not earn interest? If I join CPF Life at 66, is it that I will not earn interest because interest goes into the pool? As I mentioned, at age 65 or at age, at age 65, okay, uh, some corresponding to the amounts that you need to contribute into the CPF premium, CPF life premium pool will go to the collective CPF life premium pool. The interest earned on that CPF life premium that you contributed to the pool will stay inside the pool. It's not that you don't earn interest. The interest is inside the pool. Okay, whatever amounts remaining in your retirement account will continue to earn interest. Okay, so uh, assuming that you are not on CPF Life and at age 66 decide to sign on to CPF Life, right? Then uh, the requisite amount that needs to be transferred to the pool, right? The interest earned will stay inside that pool. Any ab amounts above that pool that stays inside your retirement account will stay inside your retirement account. Okay, the easiest way to consider this is monies that goes to join the CPF life pool, right? Only the principal that you've contributed inside there, right? If you pass on, will be bequeathed to your beneficiary, okay? Amounts inside your retirement account, no change. It earns interest, you will stay inside that retirement account. Next question. So does it mean that the full amount in my retirement account 55 is not automatically locked up to be my CPF life premium. Well, you can't withdraw that amount. So uh, I do not know what you mean by automatically locked up. You can use some of that amount to pay for property, true. Okay. But the CPF life premium contribution only starts at 65. So at 65, whatever inside your retirement account, a requisite amount will be transferred to fund this uh, CPF life pool. I can tell CPF how much to be used as premium. No, you cannot tell CPF. You, can, you must choose the plan. Standard, basic, or escalating. Standard, basic, or escalating. Okay? So the minimum amount you must leave inside your retirement account if you have a property is the basic retirement sum. So if you want to withdraw those money above that, then you can, you're free to withdraw it, right? Leaving behind the basic retirement sum. And then uh, you can choose the plan, basic, standard, and escalating. You can't, you can't tell CPF, life, CPF how much premium to, to transfer. We're running out of time, so I'll answer one last question. I'm 67 now, and I've joined CPF Life Scheme recently. Congratulations. Recently, my children topped up money into my CPF, and it went to the retirement account. Can I withdraw this sum of money? Provided you have met the withdrawal eligibility criteria, that is the full retirement sum, or the amounts up to the basic retirement sum plus property. Then if that's the case, yes. Right, so that's the last question for today. Thank you very much uh, for your question. My colleagues uh, at IFL will be, will be uh, keying in the survey link into the chat box. 
please do click on the link and uh, help us to answer this uh, anonymous survey. It's an IFL survey. And uh, if you need more information, you can go to the CPF website at cpf.gov.sg. Okay, or the IFL website at ifl.gov.sg. Do follow and like the uh, Facebook page of the uh, NSA to keep abreast of uh, more events uh, that you can sign up for. Otherwise, I thank you this afternoon for your participation and I trust that all of you will stay healthy, be safe and have a very enriching and fulfilling retirement. Thank you very much. Switch you signing off here.